Welcome to Vancouver Business Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I am Roger Killen, the organizer. This talk is brought to you by Envision Coworking, where you'll enjoy a beautiful space and community of creative, friendly, and supportive people. Our speaker this evening is Karen McGregor. Karen is a best-selling author, international speaker, TEDx and Dragon's Den coach, trainer, and the founder and CEO of the Speaker Success Formula. Karen's company helps entrepreneurs create, structure, and deliver compelling presentations to monetize their expertise and to launch successful speaking businesses. Vancouver Business Network, I invite you now to put your hands together and give the one and only Karen McGregor a warm, warm welcome. I told him he had to do it if I couldn't get it on. Hope you realize this is the highlight of my year. <laughs> Take it away. All right. Thank you, Roger. And thank you for hosting Vancouver Business Network. You are just exceptional. This meetup is uh, the best that I've ever been to. Would you all agree? Yes. So well run. So thank you so much. Uh, thank you, everyone. And uh, first thing I want to just share is, you know, most of us know that very few people have the courage and the guts and and the um, you know follow through to be a powerful entrepreneur, um, and even fewer people are interested in speaking. So I would say that probably at least hmm, less than five percent, maybe maybe even three percent of people actually want to be entrepreneurs who speak. So go ahead and look at the person next to you and say, "Thank God you're weird too." <laughs> 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 because truly, uh, we are the leaders because we're willing to do something different. Would you agree? Yeah. And whether you're speaking to a boardroom, you're, uh, you know, you're in a living room speaking to potential clients, or whether you're on a huge stage. Um, last year, I was on a stage with Tony Robbins, 4,000 people in the room. I've also been on a stage with one person in the room. And uh, let me tell you, it's harder to talk to one person than it is to 4,000. So, um, but what I do know for sure is that speaking really unlocks massive, massive potential for both you and your client. Um, and so that's why I'm here today to actually talk to you about how as an entrepreneur, you can not only have great delivery, because that's a very small part of speaking for entrepreneurs, but really have great impact through the structures and systems of your talk and your offer. And I think somebody said it earlier that, you know, when you go on and on, or you don't have enough to say, or you're anxious about it, it's simply because you haven't learned the systems and structures behind a powerful talk uh, that can grow your business and sell your products, programs, and services. Uh, here's me, and I've been for many years now, uh, a speaker, but what I want to share with you that's really good news for all of us is that you don't need to actually be a speaker to be a speaker. So I always recommend to my clients not to even think of yourself as a speaker. It's simply that you choose to share your message in order to grow your business and create the impact that you desire. Does that make sense? Yeah? Turn person next to you and say, that is good news. <laughs> <laughs> right? Doesn't it take the pressure off, you know, when you're not identifying necessarily as a speaker? So one of the things I want to share with you is even though I've been on huge stages, I've been on stage with all these people uh, that you see there. I'm sure many of them you recognize. Um, the thing that I want to share with you is that I'm, I'm no different or not special in any way. Uh, I grew up in a very, very small town where people didn't even have dreams, you know, and if you, if you stated that you had a dream, you're considered kind of weird. Anybody in, come from that kind of town, right? And so uh, what I want to share with you um, is that it, it doesn't matter where you've come from, you know, what kind of background you have, um, how, how afraid you are of speaking, uh, whether you're an introvert, none of that matters. Um, but what does matter 
is really having a high, high respect for the fact that anything in business that's successful has a system behind it. Would you agree? Yeah, and so that's what I'm really here to share with you today is a little bit about those systems. Um, the, the first thing though is to understand why speaking, why should you speak? You know, why does it have the highest return on investment in any form of marketing that you can do in your business? So the first thing is there's very little money uh, required in order to get out and speak because most places are, go are begging for speakers, especially people who know what they do. Uh, they do it well, right? And then they're invited back over and over again. Just like Roger said, he's got a few people that he invites back over and over again. I happen to be one of them. Thank you, Roger. Um, but it really is wonderful because you can start out, whether you're a struggling entrepreneur or you're doing very well for yourself, but not have to put out any money and have a lot of clients at the end of the road. Does that sound good to everyone? Yeah? Oh boy, you're a Canadian crowd tonight. How about show me some a little bit of American enthusiasm? <laughs> all right, all right, thank you, thank you. Um, so it also gives you time to do what you love. So what I always say is, as an entrepreneur, we're super busy. So the idea of speaking might hold you back, but what I say to all my clients is you only need to speak twice a month, twice a month with one talk that you can use for years. Is that a good use of your time? Yes. Okay. So it's also highly duplicatable. What do I mean by that? Um, when you have a talk like I'm doing tonight, right? You can take that same talk and put it online. Yes or no? You can take that same talk, turn it into a webinar, yes or no? So all of a sudden, that same talk, you're now global with it. And you can have clients all over the world. Some of my clients say, Karen, I don't want to speak on a stage like you do. I say, no problem, speak on a virtual stage. Do the webinars. But the problem with most people is that they don't know why their webinars are not working because they haven't created a talk that works. Does that make sense? They might have spent a lot of money, you know, spending money on the funnel and the emails and all of that. And they actually don't have a system for a talk that converts. Um, actually, th this is another thank you to, to Roger that um, I've had the opportunity uh, to be on his stage, uh, on the TEDx uh, stage. And that's a global platform, as we all know. Um, Roger has Get Inspired which I think all of you should be thinking about potentially being on, um, because these are the kinds of platforms that take your message global. Yeah, you can't sell in this case, so it's a little bit different, but I want you to really start thinking about what would it mean for you to be in front of a million eyes, right? So I had a million views in 10 months. What does that mean to have that opportunity, both for you and for them? Um, one thing I want to share with you is that you might think of speaking just as, you know, speaking and its visibility, that kind of thing, but think about it in all the different aspects, whether you are, you know, creating a new product, uh, selling a book, maybe it's a message, spotlight speaking for five minutes, uh, you know, filling events. How many people here know that, you know, you can fill an event through speaking, yes or no? Right? Right? <laughs> yeah. So. It's something that we all need to learn to do well, but most of us don't do it well. Would you agree? And so that's why I'm here and I'm passionate about it to share with you. The other thing I wanna uh, ask you is look around the room and, and, and just uh, shout out a number. How long would it take for you to uh, meet each person here individually for coffee uh, to network with them after we're all done tonight? Two months. Two months? Anybody else? Yeah, yeah, so, and that's full time, right? That would be your full time job for two months, right? Just to get everybody into your schedule. Um, and then, you know, all the, all the um, uh, what do you call it? Um, rescheduling, right? Everybody's rescheduling nowadays and often don't uh, schedule for the first time around. Um, so what I wanna share with you is that 
when you are a speaker at a networking event versus always networking, networking is incredibly important, but imagine how much that leverages your time. So instead of two months full time out, you're taking 60 minutes in front of all those same people. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah? So the other thing is referrals. How many of you want to get good quality referrals? Yes? Oh, thank you for your enthusiasm there in the back. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I put my cowboy hat on. Good, good, good. I like that. Um, so the referrals that you get on stage, and I, let me be very transparent here, is I never look for individual clients, ever. What I'm looking for in, in, a, in a room is people who have access to my community, to my type of clients. Does that make sense? So suddenly you are then positioned to have people come and say, why don't you speak to my group? I'd love you to have a webinar for my people. Does that make sense? Instead of always this tiring part of being an entrepreneur, which is trying to look for individual clients. Um, who's here into numbers? Do you understand? Okay, all right, so good portion of you, wow. And the rest of you, listen up, because this is important. <laughs> So um, the numbers in speaking, and I'm Canadian, so I'm very conservative, is that between 10 to 20% of any given room that you speak to is going to say yes to your program, product, or service during the talk if you do a good job. What I don't mean good as in good delivery, I mean good as in the structure of the talk is really solid and people want what you have to offer. So let's look at the numbers. So if you have 30 people in your room and 10% of them say yes, which is pretty average, um, and it's a $1,000 program product or service, you're earning $3,000 that night, potentially on a 60 minute talk. If it's 20% of your audience that says yes, that usually means they're warm, they know you, maybe the, the host has edified you, but generally, if, that, if, if it's 20% of 40 people, you're looking at about $8,000 for a $1,000 program, right? Now, if you add those two together and you only speak twice a month, that's $11,000 a month. That's $132,000 a year. Now, if you said to me, Karen, I don't have a $1,000 program. It's only $500. You're still earning, what, $62,000, something like that um, per year. How many people would be willing to do that just speaking twice a month? Yeah? Okay, now if you had a $2,000 program, suddenly that bumps it up to 260, 264,000. Sorry, I just wanna make sure I got the number right. Yeah, so can you see how that adds up when you speak twice a month and you're offering what you have to offer? Now here's the thing, everyone. How many of those people are gonna to continue to work with you beyond your initial offering? Right, 20 to 30% is average. So suddenly that, that time you took is producing a long-term or even lifetime clients. What is that worth to you, right? Here's somebody, um, really, really popular speaker, uh, but was always selling things for, you know, $200, $300. And uh, I challenged him. I said, you know, wh why are you just selling this small thing on stage? And he said, well, that's all that people really can do on stage i mean this is you know and and um sorry i thought you had your hand up there you're waving the flies off okay okay um and so uh so Jaden says uh well um i'm willing to work with you on this so we went through his talk his offer and we actually came up with a package one was two thousand and one was four thousand dollar package and uh, he delivered it in 45 minutes and I was there watching, you know, watching the whole thing happen. And uh, how many of the 10 spots he sold do you think were $2,000 and how many were 4,000? So let's start with 2,000. How many of the 10 spots that he sold that day in the 45 minutes were 2,000? How many? Zero? Five. Five. Anyone else? Yeah. 10. It was only two. So eight of the spots were a $4,000 package. 
So the reason I tell you that everyone is because if you like Jaden, have it in your mind that people only buy on price is a very flawed assumption. In fact, your worst clients buy on price. Would you agree? Your best clients buy on value. Yes, of course they look at the price, but they're not buying on price, they're buying on the value. So why aren't more people doing it? Why aren't more people out there speaking and sharing what they have to offer? Um, obviously, many of us know stage fright can be, uh, fear of rejection can be pretty large. And I agree, you know, I've, I've had that my whole life. I still get a little nervous when I speak. But the reality is that most entrepreneurs, the anxiety that they feel, yeah, it might be some childhood wounding and that kind of thing, but the biggest portion of why they won't speak and why they're so afraid to speak is because they don't know what's coming out of their mouth next. They really don't. And that's a scary place to be, would you agree? And even if they do know what's coming out of their mouth next, they don't know that it's gonna work. Yes or no? So what if you knew that what was coming out of your mouth would work? Would you be as resistant to speaking? Right? Probably not. So what I suggest to you tonight, what I'm going to share with you a little bit, is that speaking is a system, and so is your offer. The entire thing is really a system. You don't have to sound like me, but you do have to have a system that works and follow predictable steps. So I'll share a little bit um, of my story very briefly. Um, just over 10 years ago, I was go found myself going through a divorce. And uh, I remember the divorce lawyers, you know, sitting down with me and saying, Karen, you're smart. You have a degree, you know, a master's degree in education. And here you are trying to sell books and speak. Go back and get a real job. And, um, and, and, and in my heart, you know, I, I, I didn't feel right about it. I knew they were right on paper. Does anyone ha ever have that? You know someone's right on paper, but you know they're wrong in your heart, right? And that's what happened for me. And so I had an opportunity to speak shortly after all of that went down, and uh, it was in front of 3,000 people. I thought, yes, this is my chance. I'm going to make this work. And the reality was that I came out and I had a great talk and people were connected to me. They loved me. They gave me hugs, but no credit cards. <laughs> and we all know how long that lasts, right? When you're trying to build, especially as a single parent, you know? And so I realized at that point, you know, standing in front of those 3,000 people and having so many hugs, but not one sale. These were my people. Like I was teaching people about intuition and how to go from your head to your heart. And they were all woo people, 3,000 of them. I had to be pretty bad for that not to work, right? So I realized that it wasn't that I wasn't a good speaker. That wasn't the problem. I finally realized I need to learn a system to actually help me to go beyond visibility to growing the business through speaking. Does that make sense? Yeah? So now I'm very happy to report, uh, that's my son over there, um, Matthew McGregor, if you hadn't uh, figured that out already. Uh, and, and he and I have actually done business for the last few years together. It's beautiful. Uh, he has his own uh, multiple six-figure business. I have my own. Um, I paid for my Tesla with cash. And I, I can just tell you all right now, I'm not materialistic, but driving that Tesla home that day, that was pretty sweet. <laughs> it was a pretty sweet experience. So, you know, I, I'm all about experiences and giving back to people. I just want you all to know that um, that sense of freedom was never part of my life until I learned what I'm teaching you. So um, what I, I want to share with all of you is maybe you're thinking speaking only works for real estate. 
or for you know financial advisors or for people who talk about money. Um, but the people that I learned the most from in my many years were actually people who talked about love. As an example, who are these people on the on the screen? Does anyone know who they are? James Twyman and Michael Beckwith. Michael Beckwith is uh, from The Secret. Uh, he has Agape Ministries in California. One of the most powerful speakers in the world. He talks about love. And they both own multi-million dollar businesses that have primarily been launched through speaking. Uh, this is somebody that um, is from Calgary and she teaches people how to be vegan in Calgary. This is not easy, right? So she came to me. She was a great speaker. I thought she was one of the best speakers I'd heard. She couldn't sell a thing. And, and, this, and this is important for all of you to know is, you know, it's not about how good you are. It's like, are you getting the results? So I helped her to get the results, but it was only because she restructured her whole talk and offer. So she went from zero to 90%. Is that typical? No, it's not typical. I already told you 10 to 20% is typical, but I saw it happen. I was there in the, in the audience. Um, here's a financial advisor. Within 48 hours of taking my program, he actually ended up getting um, huge results for him. Uh, so he, he had six people that said yes to his program, and they said that they're already sold halfway through. What does that mean? It means if you do a good job, are those people in the room wanting what you have to offer? Yes or no? They are. So it puts a lot less stress on you when it comes to actual sale. Um, and, and you don't have to worry about it. So there's three things I want to teach you tonight um, about the impact and income through speaking. Um, the first is I'm going to share with you the three biggest mistakes that people always make almost every time I go and listen to a speaker, they're making these mistakes and how to do the opposite um, the, that will actually create the income that you desire uh, and the impact. For me, it's about the impact. I've, I've made lots of money in my life, um, lots and lots, and I can tell you that none of it means anything unless there's impact. Would you agree? If you're not influencing in a positive way, uh, that money doesn't mean anything. So I'm here to share that with you because I've been through all of that. Uh, so my promise to you tonight is I really want to give you as much value as I can. And then at the end, I'll show you a way to take that further if you so choose. Uh, we're going to start with mistake number three, not understanding what the audience is buying. So when you go to create your talk, most people say, what do I want to say to the world? Right? That's their question. What do I want to share with the world? But the actual way to, to really structure your talk is different. You want to ask yourself, what is it that the audience wants and needs versus what you want to say? Does that make sense? So when you start from the perspective of what is it that they want and need and start from there, you're going to have a much better structured, uh, well-structured talk. The way to eliminate boredom and distraction in your audience is to speak to their needs, yes or no? Most of us don't do that. We actually don't do that at all. Here's a picture of me speaking to 80 women who were all being served chocolate mousse. <laughs> Need I say more? That is one of the most difficult positions to be in is when, especially women with their chocolate, right? I mean, we just have a relationship to chocolate. So the way to get around that is to actually speak to people's needs, their challenges, and what, it, what is it that they really want to move away from or move toward. So either or both, right? And being in tune with that in their language, yes or no? Because you can have your own language and people are distant from it. Are you actually speaking the language? So what else are they buying when they choose to buy from you? So the first thing is your story. Now, some of you might say, I don't have a story. I'm boring. I have a vanilla life. Right? 
or I don't have this or that. I didn't climb Mount Everest. I don't have these certificates hanging off my wall. Uh, so the thing you want to know is that people don't care about that, but they do care about answering the question in their head. And the question they will have is, why should I work with you? Yes or no? So if they're going to answer the question, why should I work with you, you better be able to tell them where you were and where you are now and what was what was all in between there in terms of the, you know, the struggles and to get to where they are today. So um, I teach a whole story structure. That's part of what I teach. We don't have time to go through it today, but I do want to share with you, have you ever heard someone tell a really bad story, but it started off good? Yes? Yeah, and you can't get them off the phone, can you? They have to finish, and you don't want them to finish. Don't be that kind of speaker, <laughs> right? Now, the other thing they're buying is your expertise. But here's the thing. They don't buy your bio anymore. Do you know that? They're not buying your biography. But what they are buying is your results. Because that's the only thing that matters anymore. So are you sharing your results? Are you sharing your client results? Are they put very gracefully in the talk? Or do they stick out like a sore thumb? You know, like Donald Trump, right? We don't want to, we, um, it's a joke. God, only one person left. <laughs> <laughs> you know, with his red hat. You don't want the red hat to be, oh, let, ta let me talk about myself and my, you know, how great I am. There are ways to insert your results that will actually give you great um, feedback from the audience. All right, so client stories. What about the different types of client stories that you can tell? And why are they important to tell? Let's, let's look at them. So the first thing is, you have to have client stories in your talk that are different from what you uh, would typically offer for your own personality, your own style. Um, why is it that you want to show people who are very different from you? Does anyone know? It, yeah, because, exactly, because you only represent probably 20% of the room. Is that right? So the 80% that you don't represent are thinking, well, I can't work with her or him because they're not like me. And people will say this, and you will lose a whole bunch of potential clients. All right? So you want clients who are different. Does he look different from me? Yes? Yes. Right? So I'm expressive. I'm kind of outgoing, you know. And he's very shy, timid. But yet, speaking still works for him. So it's important for me to share that with people because a lot of people say, well, Karen, I just can't do it. I can't speak. Yes, you can. Uh, lots of introverts, actually most speakers are introverts. Did you know that? Most speakers are actually introverts, not extroverts. Yeah. All right, so, so much more story. Here is a type of story you want to include in your talk. Why? Because you want to show people that not only can you deliver on what you say you're going to do, you actually deliver on more than what you say. Does that make sense? So for instance, with Jennifer here, she's talking about what else did she get from working with me, right? She got the newfound clarity, the sales stack, the thousands of dollars in extra income, the epiphany. So she got way more than what she actually signed up for, all right? So how many of you know you have clients like that that rave about you because you gave them more than what, what? Yeah, look at that. Look around the room, everybody. Be nice and proud, everybody who's raising their hands, right? So half of you, half of you, share those types of stories. Another um, story that's really important is you're doubtful to dynamite. Now, take a look at what, just if you're not looking at me, look at me now. So um, this is what your doubtful people look like in the room. They're discerning. They're not sure if they quite believe you or the results you get. And they're looking like this. 
And they are not angry with you. They're not mad at you. But they could be your very best clients. Do you know why? Yes, thank you. They are analytical. And if you wow them through results, they're going to be your, your, your greatest source of referrals. It happens all the time. So don't be afraid of the furrowed brow look. Okay? This lady here, she was so doubtful I could help her because she had spent like tens of thousands of dollars on expensive marketing. And I said, I think you should speak. And she said, it hasn't worked for me before. She's a nutritionist, everybody. She had people running to the back of the room. A $2,000 program, a nutritionist. So what that should tell you is that, you know, if somebody like this can do it, discerning and a nutritionist, not an easy sell, right? Uh, that you can do that too. Here's another one. She's an artist. She tried everything uh, she could to sell. She came to me because she has a very expensive thing to sell in people's living rooms, which is to paint their portrait of a wealthy family starting at $50,000 US. So she, she learned how to do that in a way that she could get the results on that stage, which was a, uh, the living room of wealthy business owners. Make sense? So how many of you have this? I've tried it all and nothing worked until now. You have clients that say that to you. You're the only one that was able to help them. Yes or no? Anybody? We have about mm, six of you. Good. Use that. Absolutely use that. All right. Mistake number two, becoming the perfect speaker. Who here thinks that that might be stopping them a little bit from speaking because you're waiting to be better. You're waiting to be more perfect. Yeah. All right. And the rest of you are lying, right? <laughs> we all do this to an extent, everyone. We all do it. We wait and wait and wait. So what I suggest to you is worry less about perfection and more about connection. So perfection means you're trying to be this perfect speaker and have the identity of a perfect speaker when all, all your audience wants is connection. Would you agree? They want to be connected to you. They want to be connected to the subject. They want to be interested in it. They want to be helped. But they don't need your perfection. My son Matthew says that I make mistakes regularly on stage. <laughs> right? He's quick to point that out. And, but you know what? The results are always consistent. And this is the thing that's the good news. You don't have to be perfect, but your results, are consistent because you're following a structure and system that works versus winging it. So most speakers are getting stuck, not only in perfection, but they get stuck in procrastination and they're scared of selling because they don't know that they're going to get consistent results. Does that make sense, everyone? If you want consistency in your results, you've got to have a structure that gives you the consistency. All right. Um, all of this leads to no connection. And then suddenly I was sitting there earlier and I, I, I know I was quite forceful when I first said that, but there's a lot of quote shitty speakers out there. Right. Um, and it's not their fault. It's just that they don't know what they don't know, which is they need a system that works. So, um, maybe you're a perfectionist or maybe how many of you would consider yourself winging it? You know that you, yeah. So, and some of us are really proud of that fact, right? I'm good, people like me. And the truth is people who wing it often get results, but they don't get results consistently. And that's where you need to commit to learning a system and structure if you want consistent results. Now, um, how many of you believe, put your hands up nice and high, that you can speak and sell from the heart, that that is possible? Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. Wonderful. Yeah, you can for sure. And how do you do it? The first thing is you deliver lots of value. Now, somebody in the audience earlier when we were introducing ourselves said, you know, I don't want to give it all away. I, you know, there's the, the, I, I, I don't want to talk, talk, talk and give everything away. So what I would say to that is, 
and I've trained hundreds and hundreds of speakers in this is you, it's not about how long you talk and how much value you give, it's how you position what you are offering them, what, you, what the value is that you offer, okay? So how do you position your information such that they still want and need what you have to offer? And so that is something that I also teach people because it's so important. All of us have great info, but we're not positioning it properly to be able to get results. Uh, now, create content that's deep and not wide. What does this mean? So um, if any of you are, you know, my age, I'm, I'm 51, and I remember in the 80s uh, where everything was wide but not deep. So you talk about 51 tips to success, but you wouldn't go deep with anything. Do you see, do you, do you remember those days, everyone? Some of you? Yeah, it was like, you know, wow, we're gonna talk about 60 things that'll help you be successful and we're gonna do it in 30 minutes. Those days are gone. So, how many of you are into going deep, not wide? Yes? All right, good. Create an offer your audience can say yes to. Um, here's the thing, everyone. One of the biggest reasons you may be struggling in your business is because your offer is not a yes offer. It's not structured properly. It's not built properly for people to say yes. And this is not just for speaking. This is if you're selling on the phone, if you're selling one-to-one. -one. Um, most people don't have what I call a robust offer. So a robust offer means that really every aspect of the offer has been thought through in terms of what the client is thinking in that moment right? What, what are their objections? What are they excited about? What is it that drives them? And so a lot of us say, let's say you're a coach and you say, well, uh, here's my coaching package. This is how much it costs. Maybe you give them a little discount or something, uh, which I don't always recommend, by the way. Um, but there's nothing else, right? There's nothing else to it. And that's what I call a very poorly thought out offer. So have something that your audience can say yes to. All right, mistake number one, planning to educate without a plan to sell. How many of you do this? Oh, only the people in the back are honest. For some reason, the people in the front are not. <laughs> right? Nobody can see you, so you're going to raise your hand. So here's the thing. We all love to teach. We all love to, 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 to impart our wisdom. Um, but we're not spending enough time actually knowing uh, how to sell. Because if, if we did, um, we would have much better results, right? Now, you might be saying, well, I can sell well on the phone. Uh, let me tell you, selling on the phone and selling on stage are not the exact same thing. They are different. So uh, just, just to be aware of that. Now, if you want to, you know, really have great impact, um, you have to be able to define one clear problem in your talk. Because would you agree that when you have many, many different things you're talking about in one talk, that it, it diminishes the results of the talk and the impact of the talk? Yes or no? Okay. So can you define what is that one thing? What is that one problem you're solving? What is that one thing that you're going to carry through and thread through the whole talk? Um, the other thing is you want to plan to d dissolve the idea that your offer, your sale is different from the rest of your talk. Now, I don't have a lot of room here because I have to stay in this box, but I'm going to show you. So if you are here and the end of your talk is over there, basically what you're doing is you're really excited because you see that people are with you, they're excited, they want more. And then all of a sudden, you freeze up and, and, and you say, uh, um, if you want to talk to me, I'll be at the back of the room. And that's your offer, right? How many of you have seen that? Be honest. There's a lot of people that do that. And they're scared because they think the offer is different from the talk. The reality is those people who want and need what you have to offer already have said yes in their minds. They're just waiting for the details, yes or no? Is that not exciting? Yes. All right. Look at the person next to you and say, that's exciting. That's exciting. Oh, I love it. 
Get a little bit of woo in ya. All right, get those cowboy hats out. Um, so <laughs> I, I teach a lot in Calgary, as you can tell. Um, so, uh, so plan for clarity. What, what is this lady saying? What, give me some sounds here. What's she saying? Yeah, she's saying, huh? What? Huh? And yeah, WTF, right. And you know what? So many speakers lose people with different tangents and they're not clear, they're not directed. We don't know who is running this ship. And as soon as we don't know who's running the ship, what happens to your sales? They, they're gone. Because the audience needs you to be there and to be directing the chorus of that talk. But many speakers don't and they lose people. All right, so plan to find the right mentor, whether it's me or someone else. This is an art form that actually involves multiple systems right through from the beginning, right to the end of the talk. I think by now, you know, uh, you probably know that uh, from what I've shared with you. It's very important to do that. Um, and so uh, just to let you know, I have an opportunity for you to take this further if you wish. It's called Rock the Stage. Um, it is a three-day live event that I offer both in Calgary and in the Vancouver area. And uh, it helps entrepreneurs to be able to get results now from their speaking, not visibility, results, like real results that grow your business and have an impact on people. And we also talk about whether, you know, if, if you can't sell, how do you lead to the sale? Because sometimes your talks, you won't be able to sell. So what do you do to lead to that sale? We have that all, you know, figured out. Um, now, if you're already a great speaker, who knows this guy, Udo Erasmus, probably about half of you. Um, very, very well known. You walk into any health food store, you're going to see a whole line of his products. Um, he came to me 5,000 talks in. He said, I want to take Rock the Stage. I said, Udo, you've already spoken 5,000 times. Why are you coming to Rock the Stage? He said, because I've always been winging it. I have a huge project. I can't afford to fool around. I, I need your support. And, um, and so that's what I'd like to share with you is it doesn't matter if you're a good speaker. It matters if you want the results, then you need to get that very specific uh, line of training, right? So is speaking draining or driving your business? This is what I always ask people. If you have any questions at all, I just say, you know, every time you get up to speak for five minutes, five hours, one hour, is it draining or driving your business? Uh, this is one of my clients. She, she uh, did not sell a thing. You can talk to Paige later about that. Uh, she, she couldn't even uh, afford to, to pay her rent at the end of the month when she came to me. And her first three talks after Rock the Stage, she netted $36,000 in income. Who, who here thinks that's pretty good? Right? And from those people that, uh, that had purchased her program, 30% went on with her $15,000 program. So she netted another $75,000 uh, to add to the 36,000. So within, I think it was like four months. It, yeah, about four months, she had earned over a hundred thousand dollars and she couldn't pay her rent when she started. So pretty cool. So my gift to all of you today who are listening to this awesome recording, um, is to apply to speak to me and, and we'll go through and see if this is the right fit for you. I'll answer any of your questions. Um, and uh, we will take it from there. So speakersuccessformula.com slash apply. Uh, this is me speaking at a 4,000 person event. Um, I have been through every possible thing that can happen to a speaker. And I know that um, with my support that you can get the results that you're looking for. So again, speakersuccessformula.com slash apply. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. You're welcome. Now, oh, I have to undress you a little bit. That's all right. There we go. Karen, on behalf of Vancouver Business Network, I thank you. You've shared some great tips and tricks with us. Thank you. And if you click that, we also have to thank Envision Coworking, 
you have made this recording possible.